Good morning, youngsters. So, do you like the world? Do you enjoy the world? Do you like being alive? It's a beautiful world. I love to be alive at this time of, of the creation, actually. I think the, the future has a lot of promise uh, within, at least as I see it. And I, I agree with the first speaker we heard on the video there that nobody really knows what's going to happen. But at the same time, everything isn't perfect, is it? I mean, uh, every day isn't perfect, and we sure as hell could be even a little bit more happier. And people are starving, and some people are living in misery that we can't really believe here in Sweden as we live in this perfect... Actually, this is probably one of the richest cultures ever existed on this planet, isn't it? Uh, I had something like a... Yeah, it was yeah. Um, so if you would like to tell me, each one of you, how would you do uh, if you would like to make the world a little bit better? What would you do? We start with you, and I'm just joking, but think about it. I mean, it's rather hard, uh, but still I think that everybody would have an idea about how could I make the world a little bit better. I have an idea how to make the world a little bit better. My plan is to put a red house with white gables on the moon in order to make this planet a little bit better. That sounds so stupid, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Well, bear with me for a few minutes and I'll tell you how I think. Uh, and the technique works. Uh, this is, uh, you know, there are other buildings that are quite not buildings, uh, but they are representing something really grand. Uh, this is, of course, this is, of course, as you know, what is it? This is Angkor Wat. This is a perfect example how uh, humans destroy their own environment, uh, cutting down all the trees in order to build this stone figure. Um, this one is a country. This is France. The guy got fired when he got the idea. This is a, a whole continent, this one. How on earth did they actually uh, show Australia before 1976? I have no idea, but after that, it's an opera house in Sydney. Dubai, I love this one. Sorry about the uh, Gaudi in <coughs> Barcelona and Malmö, of course. And then we have the small uh, red house, which is uh, this is Bandi Arena. Uh, this is a uh, this has a very big, profound meaning to all of us. I think this is our culture. This is the the farming society in Sweden. Uh, changing into the industrial side. And, and uh, this house, I think, is, is, uh, it would be a very nice house to have on the moon. And um, so therefore, since, uh, since 1999, when I had the idea, I saw an article in, in the newspaper that said, now Sweden goes to the moon. Did you even, even know that Sweden has just been to the moon already? Anyone know that? Except for people who knows that. But actually, Actually, uh, Europe sent a, uh, they wanted to send a, 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 a moon <coughs> sonder to the moon, and the Swedish space company, uh, Swedish Space Corporation, was uh, the builder of this one. So we, it, it was sent away in 2003. I got the idea, as I said, in 99. And think for yourselves, if you have an idea like this, how would you do that? If you start, I come from Westeros, the small industrial town. I don't, my parents doesn't know the king or anything like that. I don't know anybody. But you get the idea about putting a house on top of the moon. How would you do that? Think. How would you do that? I, don't, I had no idea. So I had to think for two years before I actually uh, was brave enough to uh, call to the, to the um, space board. And I s said, what it was. Hi, I'm, you know, my name is Mikael Jemberg. I'm an artist. And I would like to put a house on the moon. I heard you go in there. You, you did it, did it? It's totally silent. But before I tell you more about it, this is a nice picture of me, I think. I look like a rock star. Um, actually, that too. Right? And uh, I, I told me I was an artist. And I started, <coughs> I started very, what is this? I started very traditionally. I love art. You love art? You like art? Yeah. I think it's a fantastic invention. I think it's, uh, for me, it, it blew my mind when I 
first got in contact with it and I worked for years in the white rooms creating art. And then I thought after a few years that there has to be something more. There has to be a possibility to actually do more than this. Artist has to be, uh, uh, have the opportunity to work more in the society. How could art work in the society? I did lots of tryouts, uh, mistakes, mistakes, and then success when I built a uh, red house with white gables. This is a tree house in the central uh, park in my hometown, West Norse. It's 30 meters up in the air. I thought nobody would like to live there, and that was not the point. The point was to show it, and I was thinking that I should pay people to stay there. But uh, it actually became a hotel thanks to the, the alcoholics in the park. Because <laughs> they understood after a while that it was going to be a, for free living, and so they all, hey, when can I come up and live there? And I thought, alcohol at 30 meters up, not very good. So I said, no, it's going to be a hotel, hotel, woodpecker. It's going to cost 200 crowns each time. And they said, no, 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 no I don't want to live here. And it's been a tremendous success. I built this hotel, and I built uh, an underwater hotel, which is one of two existing uh, underwater hotels in the world. And as you see, it's red houses with white gables. Uh, what you do is you, you live there, and you go in, and you open up a hatch, and you go down and you uh, are outside my hometown, Westeros, uh, in the water, in Mälaren. And uh, the only problem is that you have a sighting that is good days, it's 30 centimeters. Divers say it's like diving in, in pea soup, which is probably the worst place in the world to put an underwater room. Uh, <laughs> but the whole world is flying in to just to try it, because there's only two rooms, two underwater hotels in the world, one in Miami and one in Westeros. And the fish, the fish absolutely loves it because they're swimming in this pea soup and all of a sudden, sometimes by coincidence and maybe sometimes because they have a GPS, I don't know, but they come up to the windows and think for yourselves when you're swimming in this water all day and then you reach something where your small brain starts to operate with new functions and you see a lot of strange things. I mean, there are wedding nights and a lot of couples. <laughs> there. So they stay and go like, what the hell? Is this? So we, sometimes we have like hundreds of, of, of bass and, and, and uh, other big fish uh, lying there watching people doing something. Um, this is of course, as people told me, it's a beautiful uh, business idea. So we created a business model and, and uh, now we're going to produce these ones. So uh, that's why all these scientists uh, working with entrepreneurship is very interesting because art is almost, and as you see, we are looking at a little bit better waters. Uh, we're actually, we bought a hotel in, uh, a, a normal hotel down from Zanzibar. It's really hard now. Uh, yes, you see, it's very nice. This is the, this is Zanzibar. This is not going to work. It's going to be this slow. I have about 200 pictures. But you guys, you see, it's a perfect paradise. This is just a prelude to the underwater team, to the, to the movie. Come on. Okay. Um, the media coverage has been absolutely astounding. You have to realize that in West Coast there's two, two small red houses that's very, very, very like nothing. But this is my hometown and we have four buildings that are reach, reaching a little bit higher than the other ones. So this is the skyline. Uh, just. Uh, a year ago, they, they remade the skyline in the newspaper, and they put in a fourth little house, which is mine. I asked them, is it mine? Yeah, 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 you put the town in on the map, on the world map, so of course it's yours. And as you can see on this picture, it's not the size that matters, which all women try to convince us we never believe them. This proves it. Uh, this is a cafe with a lot of with high chairs. And this is a toilet where you actually can look out, but not in which is uh, one of the most strangest experiences you can have. Terrifying, actually. <laughs> because when you sit there, uh, this was on the art fair, and when people walk outside and they, you know, they see a mirror, so you try, because I hadn't tried, so I said, oh, this is not going to work. And all of a sudden, there's a woman here, making a lips room. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, it takes away all the, all the privacy of the world. But let's talk about the moon, because we have, the time is so short today. Um, how do you actually put a house in the moon? Uh, I, I phoned this guy and, and he, uh, he told me, you know, after a while, I think you should talk to that guy. So I phoned another guy and said, I think you should talk to that, to that guy. 
And he said, I think you should go to, and so on. And, but after phoning a lot of people, I reached a guy in Uppsala, and he said, I think that's a fantastic idea. That's the best I've heard. Sweden is one of the strongest countries in the world when it comes to uh, space technology, but nobody knows it, not even ourselves. And as you saw with your own knowledge in the subject, it's rather poor. Uh, well, what you do after that is that you try to speed. This is a lot of things that we did. We, we created a company and so on. Uh, but what you actually do is this. And as you see, for you who doesn't speak uh, English, I have it all in Swedish for you. So, I can, so you can read it at the same time. But it has to do with building networks talking to people, talking to lots of people. And that was, uh, I did that for four years. That was the only thing I did. I walked around meeting people. And was, what was very strange to me was that people actually loved the idea. I mean, some people thought it was crazy, of course. Um, that works. Uh, and we, we met all these kind of people from, from NASA, ESA, and uh, the CEOs and, and ministers of, of different kind of uh, places in the government that we met uh, the people from the parliament and so on and so on and so on and they actually liked the idea they thought well the house on the moon that's not so so stupid now when we told them all the idea uh, some people thought never if you want to do something like this never go on the first of april for instance which we did <laughs> but then you know or thomas estrus who was the minister of, of, uh, of business he was convinced that it was uh, the candid camera he thought it was blue again I thought that Leonard Swan was going to come out with a closer for the second. Very strange. But they were very nice. And, and one of them. Is that strange? Is that wrong? No? Uh, <coughs> but one thing that was in common with the meetings uh, when you actually get someone to climb in and to be a part of a thing like this is when they reach over a certain bridge and starting to use one word that is the magic word uh, in all uh, these kind of situations can you please guess what word i'm talking about one word it's not yes it's not that's fantastic it's not that's doable it's not like that one word we that's a magic word because when somebody says we when they start thinking we then everything is possible and we reached, we, in a lot of these people, and uh, we, were, we started to work on building a, a Swedish uh, moon lander, whole moon lander, and putting it into a, a, a Russian rocket cone. And we thought about the scenario looking something, something like this. Uh, it would be very expensive, of course, but, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the idea was to throw out something that doesn't look like this. It's like a monopoly house. But, it's going to be a, a box that is about twice the shoe box. And we're working now with a technical group to solve how to actually get that one to become that one. That was strange. Oh, well. Doesn't matter. Uh, and that, we will work with that for years. Uh, we were working with, with the concept of, of creating our own <coughs> lander. And we, they, they told us that it's going to cost about five, maybe six, Maybe 700 million crowns, but not, 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 not more than one million, million, one million. And that was kind of hard because it was like, there's so much money that actually deferred. And they told me that in, in the space community that when we actually get closer, we will, of course, talk to other international space agencies, uh, but not NASA, they said. But all of a sudden, in, in, in the September 2008, I got this SMS from a guy who actually had been talking to a lot of uh, high uh, positioned engineers on NASA, and they said that's a fantastic project. You should, you should, we should like to hear some more. And he asked, he sent me an SMS. He says, would you like to meet them? Then there is another magic word. Then the word is yes, <laughs> I do. So we went over a delegation of five people to NASA to San Francisco uh, in December 2008, and we had this fantastic meeting the first day met these people, and uh, as you can see, nobody seems very interested. It turns out that, <laughs> that guy is looking into the wall, and that guy, you know, it's just, they were very like, oh, what is this? And I thought when we got to the hotel that this is not going to be anything with NASA. But the day after we met this guy, who is the biggest, uh, the biggest guy there, and he said, I think that's perfect, uh, you can come with us. And I said, yeah, really? Can we fly with you? Yeah, you can fly with us. 
we're going there anyway with a small unmanned animal. <laughs> how much is it going to cost? How much does it weigh? Five kilos. Well, $10 million, he said. Five, that's concrete. What do you so now we're working with NASA. So why on earth then? Why on earth a house on the moon to make the world a better place? How is that going to happen? We knew really early that this was a brilliant business idea. Because when you reach the moon and you get the pictures, and the pictures come down to earth, there will be no media in the world that won't take a picture for this. And has, does that have a value? <laughs> that has a huge value. And if you can't uh, commercialize on that, you're an idiot. Uh, <laughs> but everybody uh -huh. in this project is working for free. It's all, uh, 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 nobody's getting paid. And so nobody's going to make that money, but we're going to get a platform in order to make the world a better place. So at, when, we when we finish talking, I will ask you again what you will think about how to make the world better, because I don't really know, but, but I think that we'll at least get the, the energy to do it. Um, sorry to have to speed up this. Um, and actually, the adventure doesn't, doesn't end with putting up the house in the moon. It stops there. So in three years, in uh, March 2013, we will land together with NASA and Odyssey Moon Limited, which is a private uh, investment company. And uh, then we, then we I, and I think that one of the things you actually could do is that you could use the Red House and you could put it everywhere, you could clone it all around the world, couldn't you? I mean, think about that, schools, Red House of Wild Gables in Africa, or pump, every pump house you want to build to create new waters or desal desal desalination plants or whatever, you make them red with white gables. If you want to save the, the, the coral reefs, you put down, uh, not walls, but you put down red houses, white gables, so the corals can, can live on it, and so on, and you create some kind of movement. Here we are today, and the time is running like that. Uh, but we are working. Trust me that we're working. Just trust me on that. Uh, we try to, can I, can I go over the time? Is it possible? Yeah? Thank you. Thank you. You don't have any buses to it. <coughs> we try to, um, you know, how, how do you actually... Yes, that, uh, things like that. We invest in what we, uh, did, we actually built. Uh, we actually built this uh, moon, moon uh, big moon uh, uh, structures uh, when you got into the, to the, to the town, and that was fantastic. And then we thought, how do we do it in Stockholm? And, or in, uh, in Sweden, and then we realized that we already have the national arena of sports in Sweden. Uh, the globe, the biggest spherical building in the world, that's a perfect moon. And I honestly think, thought that this would be totally, totally impossible to get the permission. We worked for two years to get the permission. And the CEO of Google, this is very important, she said, if it wasn't for the fact that you actually were going to put a house on the moon for real, you would never, ever, ever get the permission house on the globe. But one day it was a beautiful morning and uh, we had this uh, helicopter uh, to, to do rise it up and so on. And of course as an as an art piece this is this is one of the most magnificent thing, thing you can do. And, and think about that. Uh, we, we haven't reached to the to the to the moon but we have reached the globe which is actually quite fantastic as well. We don't have to time to see the moon though but as you see it, it was it was Pretty impressive, I think. Now the house is standing downside of the globe, and I don't really know what to do with it, so if anybody has a good idea about how to, if you have another globe somewhere, or something <laughs> like that, you have this huge media coverage. This is maybe not super, super important, but it's, it's, it's I like these, uh, these words we use, uh, courage, visions, and competence. And it's actually not, uh, it's a little bit thought through. Uh, if you start the competence, I mean, it's very important, but it's not really important, because I don't know anything really. I don't, I don't have any competence in any of these areas. But we're very close together with other people to, to put it up on the moon, thanks to visions. But without the courage, without the courage of the people who are actually joining in on this, uh, daring to put their, their necks out, and we're talking about ministers, and we're talking about people <laughs> actually getting, getting their uh, hard-earned money into the project and so on, it would be impossible. And together, as we talked about, um, <coughs> We have a guy in Sweden, which you all know, our huge hero, <coughs> our, our astronaut Christopher Fuglesang, which actually, he, and he, he was on television saying that this with a house on the moon is a good business idea. He's right, he's absolutely right. It's a good business <laughs> idea. Uh, 
he was he we came to Westeros and you can see how fantastic picture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to quit. Uh, uh, we cannot solve that our problems with the with the same thing here we use when we create them. Uh, it's an it's an interesting statement and uh, that's exactly what we're working with. And I think that we will make a change with this crazy idea. And I think that uh, if you will indulge me with uh, listening to our to the head of your song, but he's he's changing it. Who says? When I watch you from here, a special place. It's not cool this song. Is it? I don't know who did it. Can you pull it forward? Can you do it to the intro? I don't know who. Maybe you can sing it together with me on this one. Maybe it's it's no, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. No, it's that I brought, I I went over all the limits with that one. Uh, like forty seconds. Forty seconds. Yeah, 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 yeah. I put a house on the moon. Is it this cool? <laughs> Are you ready now? Thank you so much for listening. <laughs> 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 <laughs>